So hello and welcome to another um, video in this series of looking at uh, models that I've either finished building or finished designing uh, a kit. Um, this episode we're looking at uh, a model I've designed. Um, obviously the models featured on the channel quite a lot recently. Um, there's been 25 videos charting its uh, its build progress so if you haven't watched those I'll stick a link up here. Um, but yeah, there's 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 lots of details of how this thing was built. But what what is it? Well, it's the 16 millimeter scale um, Hudson Hunslet diesel loco, um, 32 millimeter gauge. Uh, yeah, and it's done. It's finished. Um, as you can see, there's a few details that you hadn't seen on the channel before, so I've given it a name, Lucifer. Um, this actually comes from the paint color. Um, so if you remember, I was using this high cut. Uh, Citroen Wicked Red, but it also gives the name in French, which it says Rouge Lucifer, and I thought Lucifer, good name for the loco. So um, those are just printed uh, plates. They're painted up um, to look like brass. Um, I quite like them. I've done a little bit of uh, kind of weathering work. Um, so I've picked out the black chassis with a bit of um, light grey, just to pick, just like highlights the details. Um, muck around where he can kind of climbs in and out and the bottom of the buffer beams um, hides some of the uh, the problems with the painting there uh, I did the same trick with the grey uh, dry brushed onto the grill just to kind of pick that out a little bit um, it's had a um, matte lacquer applied it's the testers dull coat um, I'm running low on it now, it's no longer available, but um, I thought it was worth worth giving it a go and I think it's brought out the, the colours nicely. Uh, you can also see I fitted the driver figure. Um, it's one of the car's little character ranges from IP Engineering. Um, nothing particularly special there. Uh, you can just about see I fitted the, oops, fitted the battery in here. It's got a Bosch logo on the front, just printed out, stuck on, just so it's not just uh, black. Uh, I haven't glued the driver figure in yet, as you can see. Um, he's still... He's still loose, but he's all um, nicely um, painted up. Uh, well, I say nicely painted up. He's painted up as well as I can paint driver figures, which is not very good. Um, but yeah, everything's um, everything fits inside. So this is um, battery remote control using a loco remote. Um, you, if you've seen this things before, you'll notice that these side panels come off. Um, little magnets in the tops here attached to magnets in the in the roof, and everything's kind of nicely hidden inside. Um, it's a bit of a tight fit, fit mostly because of the the choices I've made about fitting a, a, a full inline glass fuse. Uh, the fuse holder takes up a lot of space. Um, I should probably switch to a, a resettable poly fuse which would take up a, an awful lot less space. Um, but yeah, a little bit of weathering um, on the here as well, so a bit of dirt around the the turret, the, the vent here, but I've kind of gone for a, um, a look that means it looks like it's done a little bit of work, but is well well looked after uh, and relatively new. So that was the kind of the the, the colours scheme I went for, and I think that's worked reasonably uh, reasonably well. Um, so um, when we've looked at kits I've designed before, we've talked about things I've learnt. Um, the main thing I guess in 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 this in this kit, I mean most of it, a lot of it's three D printing. Um, so there was an issue with working out how to um, scale up the 4mm scale to the foot model I, start, I had that I've already done in, in 009. Um, and that's more about working out how to best print the parts myself. So the, the 009 4mm scale models, the bodies were printed as a single part on Shapeways, so I didn't really have to think about that. But I've had to break this into multiple pieces um, to both fit within the footprint of my resin printer which is a, an original any cubic photon um, model um, to um, getting also so get fitting it within that um, as you'll know if you've followed along the chassis is actually slightly too long to fit in the printer so the two um, kind of buffer beams are separate pieces and are glued on um, so that the, the chassis from kind of size here to here just fits within the, the printer um, and then a lot of the other parts, it's been working out how best to print them for best best quality and fit. Um, but other than that, then the biggest thing really was this metal piece here. So on the, four, in fact, let's show you the 4mm version. We'll do the comparison first and then you'll be able to see a bit better. So here we go. Um, 
This is the four millimeter version. Um, if I can get it to focus, there we go. Uh, which is teeny tiny. Um, is again a combination of 3D printed parts um, and a etched parts. So there's an etch for this piece that covers over the control panel and for these side doors. Um, the rest is a, a 3D plastic print and then underneath we have the, the brass the brass chassis. Um, and essentially the same same approach has happened. Um, I mean all right you can if I get them to focus you can kind of see both at once. Um, you can see the sizes is, is, is just the difference in size is ridiculous. I mean obviously 16 millimeter scale is four times bigger than four millimeter scale but that obviously means it's four times longer four times wider and four times taller so this thing comes out as huge um yeah it's 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 yeah one of the things i've learned on this is 16 millimeter scale is big you don't realize quite how big until you have a, a direct uh comparison i mean obviously you can compare the figures but seeing the exact same loco from essentially the same parts um in the two scales really brings that home um but yeah anyway so this so the same effect, a, a, a approach really um was taken with this version so the side panels are metal they could have been styrene could have been acrylic could have been anything they're actually cut from aluminium sheet um oops, we'll take him out before he damages things uh cut from aluminium sheet because i had some um but they were there i mean they're a, they're a flat shape they're easy to they're easy to cut um the problem and the real challenge on this model has been this piece so if you look at it from the back from here you can kind of see its shape so it comes up across round over and down the other side and um, forming that has been uh, a real challenge so here's a here's one that didn't quite work out properly but gives you a better a better idea of the shape um, this one as you can tell is not at all um, square <laughs> um, it was one of the one of the practice pieces um, but it gives you an idea of kind of the shape you're, you're looking at um, now forming this shape for the four millimeter version was fairly easy i had an etched line here etched line for this fold and then i thinned the metal slightly um here and here i think in fact it might have just been fold lines yeah i think it's just fold lines on the four millimeter version so you get um but that gives you quite sharp edges but on the four millimeter version it doesn't actually matter because this edge although rounded here is actually quite sharp as well because it's just because it's so small um but on this model, I, I, it needed to be a bit rounder. Um, also, because I've no idea whether, you know, I'm not intending to do this as a, as a full kit. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, I have no idea how many of these I'm going to want. Um, doing artwork for the etches and, and things could be quite prohibitively expensive. I mean, this is a big piece of metal. This, is a, this piece alone is probably more metal than there is in many of my etched kits. Um, you know, the whole... The whole um, the whole etched piece in the other kits is probably smaller than this so it would it would add considerably if i'd done this as etched so what i wanted to do is find a way to form this separately um and i couldn't do it by hand um just forming it over the shapes just wasn't working um so as i say if you've watched the other videos and there's, there's one specifically on this um I'll, again i'll stick a link um i ended up with these these plastic 3d printed formers um, actually ended up with two in the end uh, an initial one that kind of sets the right um, the right position and then one that produces slightly tighter curves that you do as a second step um, so it has this kind of um, so you, you do one fold here using the the little uh, mini uh, metal break uh, there's a review of that which I'll, again I'll link to here um, yeah so you do that as a as a fold on the uh, on the break and then you use that fold to essentially um, position the part on the on the former like that so you can see the 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 fold that you've got um... oh no two parts two parts two parts where's the other part so you do one fold in the break sorry you do this fold in the break and then this fold you can't do in the break because it's the same direction and you can't get things in so I have this tool um, where you you essentially put the part through uh, and then bend up so it's, it's that way around yeah it's that way around so you essentially put it in it would stick once it's in you can bolt it down and the metal would stick kind of straight up here before you bolt bend it 
and then you push it across. Uh, I use a ruler and just push it across. That forms the second fold, uh, and then you form the complicated top shape uh, by putting that in here. And as I say, that that chamfered edge essentially allows you to position it correctly, and the metal then goes straight across here when it, before it's bent. Um, and then this block essentially engages in the in the top and pushes down to form the the right shape. Um, a hydraulic press would probably be the best thing to do that, do it nice and smoothly and stuff. I don't have one, so I've just been using the kind of drill press um, on my lathe to do that, and it works. Um, and what you get, as I say, is this shape. It's not necessarily perfect. There are things that that don't quite work. So this top surface tends to bow ever so slightly um, when, it's, um, when it's pressed, but it's easy to kind of straighten that out with your hands. And then you can work the, the part to better match the 3D prints. But the point is, you get something that fits. Um, and yeah that was i think the the really big achievement on this on this model um was 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 working out how to do that um it's something that i'm sure i'm not going to use a lot of as a skill um it's folding the folding the metal sheets but um yeah useful a useful skill uh, and now i know how to do it um as i say there are things that i could do to improve how that works um but it's uh, but it's not too bad. Oh, you can see here now. I've removed the driver. You can see a bit more in here. I've dirtied up the inside of this because obviously it wouldn't be pristine. Um, <clears throat> if I was building another one, this should have some dials and things on here. But again, I, I didn't. I didn't get that far. Uh, you can have a better, slightly better view of the battery. Um, turn on a logo. Um, red contact. I was going to put some wires going underneath into the engine bay, but I, I struggled to get them to fit, and I just I gave up. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to have it finished to the quality that I was happy with, which is what we've got here. Um, I could do with moving that red wire so it's not so obvious. I think I've got the loco remote module that powers this in opposite way around to last time, so the wires are a bit um, a bit more tricky, but it's not, it's not too bad. Um, what I might do actually is put a piece of black paper over the back of that um, just, to, uh, just to hide all the details inside. Um, certainly before I take photos um, <clears throat> so yeah so that's uh, so that's model really uh, I think you know there are 25 other videos if you want to watch the whole the whole build process um, lots and lots of details I don't really have much else to to say about the build process I don't think the, the metal forming has been the, the most interesting in, individual thing I've learned um, so that brings us on to kits now a lot a number of people have asked um i mean i started work on this originally because somebody asked if it was possible to scale up the four millimeter version um so there has been interest in having this as a kit now i don't think i want to get into the whole process of um doing complete kits for this where i you know source every single little part but box them up nice instructions all that kind of thing like i have done with uh, with both the hudson Huntslow in four millimeter and the uh, alan keith k12 loco um <clears throat> but what I am willing to do is provide um, some of the parts and um, details of what else you would need. So um, I'm willing to put what I'm going to call it, and I'm going to call it more of a scratch aid kit. So uh, I can happily provide all the 3D printed parts um, and a preformed metal cover for the back. Um, <clears throat> that would leave you having to um, source... Uh, material for the side panels um, as I say that could be brass aluminium as long as the plastic as long as it's the right the right thickness um, mesh for the front grill uh, wire handles um, it would leave you having to find metal for the seat and do the, the seat paddings etc but again that's dependent on what driver figure you want which you'd have to you'd have to source yourself uh, you'd have to source the pins for the control panel and anything any other detailing you wanted in there and obviously you'd need to source the wheels drive um, and RC stuff um, all of which I'd happily give um, pointers to what I used and where to get them um, the chassis and drive comp the drive components is probably the easiest thing is to pick up one of Phil Sharple's uh, PS models um, chassis kits uh, that gives you everything you need that's what I built this around um, yeah, so um, as I say, instructions will be minimal probably, um, but there are 25 videos to watch me put the thing together. Um, yeah, so it would be kind of, yeah, scratch aid, all the plastic bits and the formed metal. Um, if you're interested in that, that then um, I'll put a link in the description to the contact form 
um, you can you can drop me a line and, and, and leave leave your interest there. Um, quite I, I, I don't haven't fixed yet on a completely on a price. I need to kind of figure that out. And obviously I'm not going to mention it in the video because it'll change over time based on um, how much um, the cost of materials changes, etc. Um, if people do want more of a, a kit than on a one one on one to one basis, I can possibly arrange to do things like um, the metal for the side panel and the seat, etc. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to be buying in lots and lots of chassis components and then and waiting for them to sell. You'll have to kind of source those parts yourself. Um, but if you'd like to, um, if you'd like one of these, then yeah, um, get in touch and um, I will put you on a list and then work slowly through that. That list of people, as I say, it takes quite a while um, <clears throat> to print all the components. Um, and obviously there's quite a bit of manual work in, in cutting and um, shaping these parts. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, uh, leave me a comment. One final thing that I thought was worth um, potentially showing um, is if I clear the desk so I've got some space. Um, this is what development looks like. Uh, <laughs> a bit difficult to see on the camera. It's a box of um, over a kilogram of scrap plastic parts. Um, there is like eight, nine chassis in there. Um, lots of different attempts at the different power unit types. The, the working out how to do the top properly. Um, test jigs where I had the pins for the front to locate properly. You name it, there's all sorts of um, gunk in there. But yeah, there's, there's over a kilogram of, of, of plastic, um, which means that I've used um, over a bottle of, um, over, over a litre bottle um, of Elegoo's um, water washable uh, black uh, resin. These, this, this is a, a thousand gram bottle. So if I'm assuming that um, the resin is about the same weight as water, um, and one gram per centimeter cubed um, then um, yeah well yes because this is this is sold as like a liter but then it says a thousand grams on the box as you can see either way <coughs> it's over a, over a over a liter over a over a bottle of resin um, has gone into the development process there's less obviously a lot less resin in each of the in each of the models um, but it does explain um, yeah it's been an iterative process, shall we say. I think that's the point I was trying to make with the with the resin bottle. Um, but yeah, it's been an iterative process, but we've got there. We've we've gone from um, you know the initial idea of scaling up the four millimeter version um, to actually producing the sixteen millimeter version. So um, hopefully you've all enjoyed the watching the journey. Um, I've really really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed all the feedback on both the comments on YouTube and on forums where the video has been posted, etc. Thank you all. Um, I have no idea what the next model will be, but obviously um, subscribe. And um, when I start the next uh, series, you won't you won't miss out, and you'll be able to follow along. Uh, yeah, thank you very much.